Lord, he's mighty and great. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Much honored, Brother Weed. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. I've seen your son, but it's good to see you as well, your family. Longtime friend. Uh, thankful that they're here tonight. Appreciate it. all of you that are here tonight. We appreciate you being in this service. We've got a lot of great things going to happen here. You want to know one of them? Jesus is here. <laughs> he's going to be in the beginning. He's going to be in the middle. And he's going to be in the end if you'll give him a chance. Praise God. It's good to see Carla Sue here tonight. So thankful that her and her husband are here. Brother and Sister Walker. I appreciate each and every one of you. You know what? I want to give God a chance tonight. Amen. A lot of times we walk out of here and we say, you know, we had a real good move of the Holy Ghost. But the fact being is, is God wanted to do more for us. And we didn't let him. And we were satisfied because of just the usual shout or the usual walk up and down and the usual just small touch. But I believe that God wants to move in somebody's life. I believe that God wants to touch somebody here tonight and do something great in their lives. Take the depression. Take those things away that haunt you and make you whole again. Amen. Let's praise and worship God tonight. Sing along with us.
heavens to open. We've got to praise Him. Yes, Lord Jesus, we praise Your name. We thank You, Lord. We bless Your name. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of honor. We thank You, Jesus. Yes, my God. Special prayer for our brother. Miss him tonight. We have a continued prayer for Brother Jernigan, for the Kazi family, Benjamin Tolbert. Special prayer for Izzy, Izzy Vincent, Connor Boyd, Glenn DeSalvo, Karen Johnson, Sister Ford, John Horton, Sister Beth Martin, C.J. Welch, Greg Moore, Sister Horton, Brother Irwin, Brother Boswell, Huey Armand, Junior Hex, Dallas Jones, Peyton Bailey, Sherry Michelle, Patsy Williams, Joanna Hemingway, Ricky Mayo, Sister Hope Lee, Brother Boycher, Rosalind, friend of the Tiptons, Brother Roger Mitkiff, Sister Kennedy, Nancy Smith, Nolan Perkins, Sylvia Smith, Matthew Thatcher, Alan Addison, Brother Danny Lee, Brother Bill Gunn, Brother Daniel Jean, Donald Jean, I'm sorry, Donald Jean, a special prayer for him especially. Please, let's lift these names up with faith tonight that God's going to move over them. Jesus, we ask right now that you move, my God. We ask, my God, that you would touch every name mentioned, my Lord, that you would step into every situation, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your comfort, my God. We thank you for your promises that are in your word, my God, that you will step in and that you will take care of your children. Lord Jesus, release a spirit of faith tonight. Release a spirit of boldness over this congregation. Help us to see you, my God. Oh, Lord, open the doors right now that you would have open. We believe it in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name we pray. Good man, sister, you've trained him well. He's obedient. <laughs> well, I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. We've got a good ingredients for something to happen. You may be seated just for a few moments. Again, I love this church. I love the people here. You all are my family. And, uh, you know what? I'm excited. I'm excited about what God has in store for us here at Leesville United Pentecostal Church, the first United Pentecostal Church here. What an amazing morning this morning. Didn't Brother Welch do an outstanding job? My goodness. Thank you, Brother Welch. Thank you for feeling after the move of the Holy Ghost and several people that were touched here this morning following the lead of the Holy Ghost. Magnificent Easter Sunday that we had, two filled with the Holy Ghost. We're so thankful for all of those that were in our service, the promise was just uh, an amazing. And, and I concur with you, Brother Christian. Uh, I leaned over to him and I said, do we have any chairs that may be available that we could put in the aisle if we keep growing like that? Amen? Remember five years ago? Okay. It's still happening. It still can happen. It still will happen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. A great student pastor. And oh, well, let me not forget this. If you had a part, if you had a singing, if you took care of costumes and you had a part in the play, thank you. Thank you. And, and where's Sister Christian at? Here she is. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Not only can she put on a great promotion, but she can sure keep this man here in line, can't she? <laughs> ah, we love them. We thank you so much. You did a great, great, outstanding job with the promise. I'm telling you, there was people that were leaving out of here that were crying. Their eyes was just filled with tears, and I know that they were touched. Amen. Praise God. Student pastor did a great job uh, Wednesday night, that following Wednesday night. Brother, Brother Gum was here and done a great job. This week again, we're going to have a fabulous church uh, 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 services along with the First Church Academy. And again, some of the most polite, considerate young people that I was around during this trip, I 
I never heard anybody get out of line, out of sort, get in a squabble of any kind. And if they did, again, here's the caveat. I don't want to know. I don't want to know if they did. Well, Brother Pennington, wait a minute. Let me, nah, I, nah, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Because you were just spectacular and great. And I'm so thankful because what you represent is your church. When you go off like that, you represent our pastor. You represent the things here at this church. Praise God. Praise God. Also, I want to make mention, May the 1st, Promise and Power Update for uh, Pentecostal Sunday. Outstanding day of preaching and praise is going to be taking place May the 8th, Mother's Day celebration. Look at you, neighbor, and say, Mother's Day, May the 8th. Amen. Mother's Day celebrations, Pastor's wife, dear sister Christian, is going to be speaking for us, author of many books, many conferences that she's been in, spoke at in the U.S. and Canada. You know, we have a celebrity. Amen? Right here. <laughs> yes, amen. We have the best of the best. I don't know how you see it, but we have the best musicians, the best singers, the best drummers. We have the best preachers. Amen? Praise God. We have the best, the best of the best. May 15th, honoring our graduates, student pastors. Sunday morning, we'll be preaching Brother McGee that night or that evening. Please send any graduate that you have that's affiliated with the church, associated with church family. Here, see Sister Kara Moses, a student pastor. We want to recognize them. We want to make sure that we reach out to them. May 22nd, preparation for Pentecostal Sunday. Also, May 29th, Memorial Day in honor of Fort Polk heroes. Brother Jernigan will be in charge of that. He'll be, he'll be putting that on. We're so thankful. Brother Jernigan, we love you. We're thankful that God has touched you and your family. Praise God. Praise God. We're looking forward to that. Uh, service coordinator and Michael Barley will be the speaker. As well, on June the 5th, Pentecost Sunday, evangelist will be Brother Daniel and Kaylee Bernard. They'll be here on uh, uh, June the 5th. June the 19th will be Father's Day. Point to the person next to you and say, Father's Day. Don't forget that. Amen. I'll take all the gifts that you don't want. All right? Anyway, Brother Lewis McGee will be preaching that day. Also, please remember Mother's Memorial Quilt. It's in the back. The quilt is made by Sister Jessica Johnson. Uh, Sister Jessica McKee. I'm sorry. Jessica McKee. And Sister Shalon Johnson. Okay. Everybody say, bless his heart. Oh, bless his heart. <laughs> and they are the ones that made it. It's beautiful setting out there. Please take a look at that. And also, please remember, each Sunday and Wednesday night, we have a multicultural uh, our, our Spanish church that will be taking place. Brother Dustin and Brother Alvarez. Uh, I thought I seen him. Ah, oh, there he is. We love you, man. I want you to know that you're doing a fantastic job. Appreciate everything that you do. I hear nothing but good. Also, updates and testimonies, partners in evangelism will be Again, the next coming call on May the 1st, 515, so don't forget that. Also, where's Brother Dowden? Come up here, Brother Dowden. Talk to us. He's going to talk to us about men's conference. Praise the Lord, church. If you're a man, pay attention. All right? You can get away for the weekend. We will leave here Thursday night. A Thursday afternoon, I guess, uh, restoration starts around 1 o'clock at the Tioga Campgrounds. There is a place for you to stay in the, in the uh, we got two church dorms over there. You can come and stay and be a part of that. It will be Thursday night, all day Friday, Friday night, and into Saturday morning. And then you can come home to your lovely wife and your family, and then you can go mow the grass. But until then, you can come and go to men's conference. Amen. You will need to bring your uh, sleeping bag. We will provide you a bed. You can bring your own pillow. We're not providing that for you to, to do with that. You just have a bed. Amen? But this is the thing. You might be on the hinge of saying, you know what? I might have something else to do this weekend. Just listen to me. The Bible says that the adversary comes and he has, a, he has to bind the strong man first. Man, listen to me. You're the strong man. You're the priest of the home. The devil cannot come and attack anybody in your family without coming to you first. 
And if you allow him, the adversary, to spoil your family, then it's your problem. I'm just being blunt with you. It's your fault. And I'm just going to tell you like it is. You get up and you go over to men's conference, and then you will be able to see the adversary come and despoil the family. Amen? You will be able to see because then you will get spiritually ready and get to the point that we're in a place that you need to be that whenever the adversary does come and he opposes a threat against you, you know who it is already. You know the way that's going on already because of the simple fact you've done been to men's conference and you've been taught and you've been into the presence of God to see and to feel after the Spirit of God. Amen? Man, it's time for us to go to war. Because I'm going to tell you what, we're not living in the society that I even grew up in, much less a lot of y'all that grew up in it. Amen? We're, we're, we're in a total different world that we ever lived in in all of our lives. And you say, duh, yeah, we ain't none of us been here. But I'm going to tell you what, it's a lot worse now than it ever has been. And it's not even going to get any better. That's the beautiful thing about it. You say, boy, you've done lost your mind. Can I just tell you, whenever it gets worse, the church gets even better. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. The church is going to rise up because at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you what's going to be shining. It's going to be the church of the Most High God. It's going to be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that is applied to your life. And that's what's going to be shining through the cold and dark dying world. It's going to be the light of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We encourage everybody to come and to be a part of men's conference and tonight at the end of the service when the last person gets filled with the Holy Ghost the last person gets baptized the last person gets healed we can meet up right over here for all of the men that want to go to let us know that you're going to be going and we can plan for every man to be there amen love y'all church thank you brother Dowden I will say that everyone that I've been to, they've been a tremendous blessing to me. And I'm telling you, and every man that's ever been to one of them, it's been a blessing to them. Again, I want to encourage you to be a part of that. We're going to have with Brother uh, Student Pastor. He's going to be going to the men's dorm on Tuesday. Please feel free if you want to be a part of that to go over there and help him with anything that needs to be done, sweeping or whatever, to get it prepared. He'll be going Tuesday to do that. Wedding shower. Who is Madison and Tanner? Yeah, Madison and Tanner. Oh, look at that smile on that man's face right there. I tell you what. You know what? 43 years ago this month, my wife has always kept a smile on my face. Amen. And I'm looking at this man here, and he's always got a good smile. So you're doing a good job, Sister Madison. Keep that smile on his face. Amen. Praise God. They're going to be having a wedding shower here. And uh, please, on April the 30th, Saturday, M MC Green Center, 5, 30, 5 p.m., I'm sorry. So please, make plans to be there and be a part of that. And uh, I'm sure that they will appreciate that so much. Baby Bassinet for Jonas and Lakin, new arrival, Ava, arrived here on 1229 or 1229 a.m. Friday. So Bassinet, from what I understand, in the back there, so you can uh, put your gift in there for them that so happy to have brother and sister Irwin's niece is she here tonight Let's see if she's not here okay also she's for Christ oh, oh let me back up I missed one um, uh, let's see she's for Christ fundraiser Sunday May 15th following the service also I want to welcome he's not here but we still want to welcome brother Ethan Luxton who was here this morning. We appreciate him so much being a part of this service. He preached for us Friday night and did a tremendous job. So thankful. Tonight, Sister Izzy, Vincent, Sister Sharon Richards, I believe she's here. We're going to be baptizing them tonight. Yes. Praise God. So thankful. So thankful for them. We have the baptismal certificates and also, don't forget, Brother Dustin's Name of the Grace Stories podcast. Go back. Look at that. Brother, Brother Gum is on there, and I'm telling you, you did a great job, and I'm so thankful that we had that. I'm telling you, it touches a lot of lives. You're getting a lot of hits on that now. I mean, a lot of people are, are getting on that and looking at that. Thankful for you all that have made that possible. Let us stand. Brother Pennington is going to be taking up the offering. <laughs> so if you would, the ushers come, and we'll get ready to do that.
again, is so thankful for all of our visitors here tonight. Thank you for being here. You know what? God is going to move in a mighty way if we'll let him tonight. Let's pray over this offering. Dear righteous God, we come to you, Lord. We ask you, God, to bless this offering for your work, for your glory, and for your work. And God, we'll give you the praise and the glory. God, that's due unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the church say in Jesus' name. Praise God. And if you're in the choir, you can go ahead and make your way up. Page 87. I haven't sung this song in 100 years, so hopefully we don't mess nothing up. Let me walk, blessed Lord, in the way thou hast gone, leading straight to the land above, giving cheer everywhere to the sad and the lone. Fill my way every day with love. We'll fill my way every day with love. As I walk with a heavenly dove, let me go all the while with a song and a smile. Fill my way every day with love. We'll keep me close to the side of my Savior. Oh, baby. 
yonder. I'm ready to see Jesus walk on those streets of gold. Are you ready to view that holy city? Yes, worship with us as we sing.
Mr. Mitchell? Because I just find myself saying, I'm headed somewhere. This world is not my home. One of these days, hallelujah, I'm going to walk where the slam is the light. I'm going to see that sin. Left me, and I'm gonna return. 
rejoice and I'm gonna shout and I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna give him the glory because he he is the worthy of it. He is the worthy of all the glory and all the because and I'm gonna view the holy city. take time. Come on, Brother Lewis. Y'all give Brother Lewis a big hand. While he's coming, do you love this choir? Please don't go anywhere just yet. Just yet. Just don't go. Don't, 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 don't. Give him a little hand right now. I don't know how in the world, Brother Alvarez, Sister Mitchell, where'd you, you probably, you, somebody needs to get, can you give this choir absolutely remarkable, 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 remarkable. Man, we're so thankful. Sister Mitchell, that was fabulous. This choir, I noticed some new members. Happy about them. I'm looking all across the house and I'm seeing so many wonderful folks. The Walkers are here tonight and we love them. We're so glad to see them. And Jason Vincent, Sister Tabitha, 
Brother Jason, we're glad to see you all tonight. And we got lots of other guests in the house, and some of you have had the chance to meet. But if you could kindly stand after you put up with me carrying on all this time, we're going to introduce again the man of God that did such a marvelous job preaching to the word of the Lord today. There were several that were filled with the Holy Ghost, several renewed in the Holy Ghost, several I'm convinced that were healed and strengthened and their lives were made better. Are you happy to be again on a Sunday night? Tell me where in the world could you ever be that you could feel any better about being alive than being right here in the presence of the Lord. Can somebody give him a shout of praise again? <laughs> Hallelujah. I love you. I honor you. I thank you. I thank you, ever, everyone. Brother and Sister Irvin, I didn't get to mention your, was that your niece that was, that was filled with the Holy Ghost? Or was that, that, that was your niece prayed her through to the Holy Ghost this week in their home. She was baptized this, 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 this was past Wednesday night. Brother and Sister Hillman and Oh, we're so thankful for Izzy and thankful for your sister uh, that's going to be a uh, sister-in-law, that's a sister that's going to be baptized tonight. We give God praise for that. Can you give the Lord thanks? Hallelujah. I don't know. Man, what I really feel like when this service is concluded, I don't know where the altar call is going to go or what's going to be, but I've got a request. If it's not tonight, maybe next Sunday night or the next Sunday night or every Sunday night from now on, Hallelujah. Can you give God praise? Thank you, dear Sister Mitchell. What an absolutely remarkable work of the Holy Ghost. Welcome with me tonight, the dear, honored, and loved evangelist right out of the heart of this church to this whole host of fellowship around the world. I love him. I respect him. He means so much to all of us. Could you give John Welch a great big welcome tonight as he comes to preach the word of the Lord? Oh, lift up the name of Jesus together. Lift up your hands and give him a shout of praise. God, we honor you. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just told the whatever of the main worship team I could get a hold of, I said, don't leave me now. Just stay close with me. Hallelujah. So if you're close and you're part of the worship team, come on back up here and help me. I lost Brother Alvarez. I know he's, he's a leading interpretation, and that's okay. Maybe somebody else will step in. Hallelujah. Sister Shonda, I just feel the Holy Ghost. Do you feel the Lord right now? Do you feel the Sister Kristen? Maybe somebody. Hallelujah. I just wish somebody would play that piano while I preach a minute here. Hallelujah. Glory. Do we get him back? Hallelujah. If you got interpretation to do, we understand. But I feel the Holy Ghost right about now trying to do a work for the Lord. I came to have church tonight. I came to lift up the name of Jesus, and I came to glorify Him. And this worship team already began to do just that. And I just feel like staying right in the flow of the Holy Ghost while I'm preaching tonight. I just want the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, let, say let, let the Lord have His way. Hallelujah. Let the Lord have His way. We're in the house of God. This is a Pentecostal church. We've already experienced such a great, tremendous move of the spirit this morning people touched and filled with the holy ghost people being healed and delivered i'm just thankful right now to be right in the middle of his presence i just wish you'd lift up your hands again while you're standing hallelujah i'm glad all of you are here i'm thankful for you i good to see both brother weeds here in the house we're just going to worship the lord and just keep having church uh, the Bible said in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 38, 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 38, the scripture reports in 18 and 38 that uh, the fire fell from the Lord and consumed the burnt sacrifices and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up all the water that was in the trench. I'm preaching tonight from 1 Kings chapter 18. And if you're going to just stay with me, why don't you shout Jesus? If you want to be seated, you can be seated. But if you want to keep worshiping the Lord, just keep on worshiping him. Because in just a moment, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus together. We're going to praise him from our hearts. Hallelujah. Right about that time in 1 Kings, the Bible says that the prophet Elijah 
living in those secular times in that nation of Israel said, I'm here and I'm seeing all the reports of people who are not willing to serve the Lord, a culture that's against God. But he's saying in his heart, I'm ready to see a move of God. I'm tired of all the false worship of Baal and all the all the all the temples to the other gods but he said there's only one true God he is Jehovah and I want to lift up his name hallelujah and the prophet said here's what we're going to do boys I want you just to get together hallelujah hallelujah brother Joel you got that thing turned on yet sister Kristen you got that thing turned on yet uh, hallelujah Play, just play me something to preach along with. Hallelujah. I see Brother Alvarez right over there. He's interpreting something. He's saying, Brother Welch is fixing to let go right now. Hallelujah. I want the Holy Ghost to... Hallelujah. And the prophet says... There, there we go. Hallelujah. And the prophet says... And the prophet said, here's what we're going to do. All of you boys that claim somebody else is God, why don't you just gather all of your prophets up? And the Bible said there was about 450 of them. And they gathered all those folks up, and Elijah said, well, you offer a sacrifice on the altar, and I'm going to offer a sacrifice on the altar. And the God that answers by fire, we're going to say that he's the God we're going to worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. And right about that time, the morning sacrifice came, and those prophets began to chant and began to shout, and began to dance and to scream and to cut themselves, all in hopes that some God would hear them, the God that they call Baal. But after all of that day went on, the noon and the evening sacrifice came. There was still silence on the horizon. And Elijah steps up and says, Well, boys, I know you look a little tired. I know you're exhausted. He said, I just got something to ask you. Maybe is your God too busy to come and respond? Maybe is he too tired to listen? Maybe it is that your God doesn't hear very well. Hallelujah. But he said, right about now, I'm going to pray. And Elijah called on God from heaven. And he said, Lord, if I'm a man of God, and if you've heard our prayers, and if you've seen what's going on in this culture, in this society, he said, give us a moment to prove that you're still on the throne. And Elijah called for God to send fire from heaven. And he said, put the sacrifice on the altar. Repair the altar and build it back and make it ready. Put a trench all the way around the altar and pour the water over the sacrifice. And he did that twice and the trench was filled with water. And the Bible says when Elijah called to heaven, the fire fell on the altar and the consumed the sacrifice and it consumed all of the water and all of the wood and it licked up all the dust and I just got a feeling right now we're serving a God who still likes to prove that he's on the throne and that come on now there's people in this world that are worshiping all sorts of idols and all sorts of superstars and all sorts of people. We live in an hour when the, when the people are worshiping the creation more than the creator. But that's not gonna happen here at the First Pentecostal Church. We're still worshiping Jehovah. We're still serving the living God. We're still exalting the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just came tonight to to let the fire fall. I didn't come to get in the way. I didn't come to hinder the process. I just came to let God do what he wants to do. God always responded with fire. It didn't matter if it was David at the threshing floor when he offered a sacrifice and God was well pleased. The Bible says fire fell from heaven. 
when Solomon offered uh, a dedication at the temple, uh, when God saw that it was good uh, and it was acceptable, uh, fire always fell from heaven. Uh, I'm not talking about some uh, engineered fire from earth. Uh, fire always ascends from the bottom up, uh, but when God sends it, uh, it comes from the top down. Uh, and that's evident, brother, that it's sent from God. Uh, there's nobody manipulating it. Uh, there's nobody putting on. I want to tell you, God is still willing to consume our sacrifice. If you'll offer God a sacrifice of praise, if you'll worship God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your spirit, I just came to remind you that He will not forsake you. And unlike the gods of Baal and Ashtaroth and all of the false gods, He said, I will respond to your prayers. You know, it's flesh that we're dealing with. All of us are harnessed with this state of being. And we call it the flesh, but it's our natural person. It's our natural man. It's our carnal person. The unregenerate soul. But when the Spirit of God comes into our life, that natural man is suppressed and our spirit man is alive. I just got news for somebody. All of us, all of us in the flesh, the Bible said the flesh is enmity towards God. The carnal mind is enmity toward God. And no matter how great a person we might feel like we are, we're all strapped with that negative, natural, carnal state of mankind. We've all got to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We've all got to be set free from our carnal mind, our evil imagination, our sinful nature, if you will. But I want to tell you many times we don't recognize it. We don't recognize it. But even in this hour, even in this hour and this time, if we live in the flesh, it's still unpleasing to God. He's wanting a people that are willing to worship Him, a people that are willing to turn from a sinful nature to a spiritual man filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, living a godly and, and perfected life. Not that you're perfect, but that you're striving to live according to the mandates of the Scripture. Uh, because in our sinful nature, uh, we're still, uh, the flesh still reeks uh, of an unsavory, detestable, and nauseating, uh, a vile, revolting, uh, a putrid, uh, and a heinous, uh, and an appalling stench to God. Uh, even the greatest people, uh, in the nostrils of God without the blood of Jesus Christ applied to our life. We're all that negative person, that negative, oh hallelujah. I just got to tell you, I came to deal tonight with a carnal nature and say, you know what? We've got to be, we've got to be renewed by the Spirit. We've got to be touched from heaven. It's not because of our good works. It's not because the strength of the flesh, but it's because our spirits have been set free free by the power of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Here's what I want to tell you, and I'm going to let them worship the Lord. When a person works in an environment that's less than, less than, less than gratifying, some of you men can be in an environment for years. I walked in a place the other day. It was a large warehouse. And in the warehouse, they did a lot of mechanic type work and rebuilding engines. And they were working with very toxic, toxic cleaning elements. And the warehouse was open To the office staff and all the office staff was in a side compartment but the building was open and I walked into that place of business and the and the strong fumes they hit me like jolted me and to the man at the counter I said how can you how can you work in this environment he said, we've been working here so long. 
We don't even smell that anymore. And there's people who work in environments, circumstances. They get used to it. And I just got to tell somebody who's trying to, trying to overcome the tendencies of your natural man. And the tendencies are the same for all of us. The carnal man wants to do those things which are pleasing to him. The carnal man is enmity toward God. The carnal man loves pleasure. And the spirit man is trying to deny himself. And the carnal man wants to go the ways of the world. But the spirit man wants to come to the altar and worship. I'm preaching to somebody who's trying to get out of a, a prison, a bondage. And the enemy has you in a... I just want to tell you... <laughs> The carnal mind is in me to, to God. And though you may have forgotten about how vile and how rough and how, how, how distasteful the flesh can be in the, in the nostrils and the, in the eyes of God, I want to tell you, when you come into His holy presence, you realize, God, I'm just a weak carnal. Oh God, I just need your regenerating power. I just need the Holy Ghost to deliver me from my own flesh. I want to tell you, many people don't understand it. Many people don't realize it. But no matter how long you live, you're never going to improve on the flesh. You can live a hundred years and you can take courses to try to increase and try to better yourself. But until your flesh is crucified and placed on the altar and your spirit man is let loose I want to tell you you can never improve on the flesh the flesh is always going to be flesh you've got to have a conversion where you let the spirit man excel and you suppress the natural man oh hallelujah I'm preaching right now to God would let the fire fall and here's how it's going to happen God according to Hebrews 13 and 15 the the scripture says that we offer ourselves on the altar. We, we become the sacrifice. God, I offer myself upon an altar. I offer my vile flesh, my despondent, my carnal mind, my, my unregenerate man. I offer that on the altar. I want to tell you, and when you submit your life to God, you're willing to give God praise and worship. I want to tell you, that sacrifice is received, and the Spirit of God lets loose the fire on the altar. Hallelujah. I'm preaching in Acts chapter 2 experience. I'm believing that God it's going to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. I'm believing that the fire is going to fall on Sunday night. I'm believing that through worship and praise and repentance, we can overcome our carnal minds and our flesh. Oh, hallelujah. That's enmity toward God. The flesh don't want to worship God. The flesh don't want to serve God. The flesh don't want to repent to God. But I want to tell you, when you toss that old carcass on the altar and the sacrifice is consumed, you're going to leave here transformed. Hallelujah. And just like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, they said, did not our hearts burn within us? When the fire of God comes, I want to tell you, my heart's going to be set aflame. My spirit's going to be set loose. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost on Sunday night. I wonder, won't you stand with me? me right now. Why don't you just lift up your hands and say, God, I came to be a living sacrifice. I came like Romans chapter 12 says, to be a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Oh, hallelujah. I came to put myself on an altar. I want to be consumed by the fire of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship team, get ready to help me. I feel the Holy Ghost. Glory, glory. Woo! Clap your hands to the Lord on Sunday night. God, I don't ever want to get left get used to being in a negative circumstance with my carnal self. I don't want to get used to living in a house with a carnal man. God, I just got to let the spirit rise up. Lift your hand to say, Lord, let my spirit man excel tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let my spirit man excel. Hallelujah. 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God. Y'all got something you can help me with, Brother Alvarez? Glory. You feeling the Holy Ghost yet? Whatever you feel, sister. Mitchell, praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost is going to help us right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's what I want to say as they began to sing. I just wish in a symbolic way that if you're, you're tired of dealing with a carnal mind and the tendencies of the flesh to go back to the world, you're tired of dealing with evil imaginations and nightmares, you're tired of dealing with a vile flesh, I want to tell you, bring that to the altar and say, I'm submitting myself to God again. And you watch in about five minutes, the fire's gonna fall, hallelujah. And there's gonna be a, a, an outbreak of worship, hallelujah. When the fire falls and consumes our hearts, come on now, why don't you make your way to an altar? It's Sunday night, it's time to worship. It's time to offer up a sacrifice of praise. It's time to offer a sacrifice on the altar. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and lift up those hands. Say, God, I offer myself on a sacrifice. I offer myself on the altar. I offer myself on the altar right now.
like he said it. These men are not drunk as ye suppose. Seen as but the third hour of the day. But this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see these, and your old men shall dream, and on my servants and my handmaids, and they shall prophesy. And they begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the entrance. Somebody ought to give a shout right now in the Holy Ghost. You said a bit now when I prayed through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head, it's all my feet. Say it.
praise. Is that right? Somebody give a shout of praise right now. Hallelujah, brand new, a brand new creature, a brand new young lady in the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, church, this is apostolic. This is book of Acts. This is what they did. This is what he commanded them to do. They did what he asked them to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Strings are glowing. Hallelujah. 